Welcome to Cellpack. Today we would like to show you a video demonstration about the installation of our new product called Medium Voltage Cable Joint Type WMB. WMB is a joint produced by Cellpack. This WMB can be installed on XLPE to XLPE straight through joint or XLPE to PILC transition joint with slight variation to the installation procedure and components. Before we start, we would like to remind you that this installation has to be done by a competent jointer. Make sure that all of the necessary personal protective equipment is ready to be worn or available for immediate use, such as safety helmet, safety gloves, safety shoes or boots, reflector vest and additional first aid kit. Do take care and be aware of your surroundings, such as passerby, vehicles and heavy equipment, only perform the work when conditions are ideal and it is safe to perform such activities. In the case of heavy rain, it is not advisable to do the work. However, if it is only drizzle, a canopy or tent can be set up and work can continue to be performed. Do not forget road sign boards and cones to alert traffic. Last but not least, make sure to double check that the cable is not being energized and is completely free of residual current. Safety lock mechanism and danger board must be put in place at the incoming feeder, giving electricity supply to the cable to ensure cable will never be energized during the entire jointing process. Let's relist all the components from the WMB joint packaging box one more time before the installation. Before we do the WMB joint installation, please double check all of the components based on the list of components provided. Read carefully the working instruction provided in the kit before starting the installation. Lay down both XLPE cables facing each other. Now we shall do the cable preparation. On one cable, from cable end, make a mark based on the cable size on outer sheath. Next, open the outer sheath on that marking area with manual saw or a cutter, including the armor beneath the outer sheath. Next, expose 40mm armoring and 20mm inner sheath. Do not cut the cable tape screen. Remove cable filler until copper tape screen is exposed. Apply PVC tape on the tape screen 175 plus FMM from inner sheath cut edge. And roll the constant force spring RF4 on top of PVC tape. Cut the tape screen. Do not cut the semiconductive layer.
Now we are going to remove the semiconductive layer. There are two methods that can be used. The first method is by using Cellpack Semiconducting Layer Removal Tool HLS. There are two parts of the tool, the red part and the black part. Put the blade of the red part of the tool 20mm from the copper tape screen cut edge. Put the black part of the tool beside the red part. Set the direction of the red part of the tool and make a full round cut first, followed by a changing direction to give 3 or 4 longitudinal cut. Pull out the semiconductive layer. The second method is by using a rat tail file. Apply PVC tape over the tape screen and extend 10mm to the semiconductive layer. Roll the constant force spring on top of the PVC tape and use rat tail file to file a nice square cutback. Use roll emery cloth to further smoothen the semiconductive edge. Use cutter gently to make the lateral or the longitudinal cut and pull the semiconductive layer. Do not cut into the XLPE insulation. Make a mark for a distance of half connector plus 5 mm and pencil the insulation 45 to 50 mm. We need to expose 5mm of inner semiconductive layer, or we often called this the strand shield. Smoothen the penciled area with emery cloth grade 150. Proceed to remove the XLPE for half connector length. Open XLPE insulation at the end of the cable core. and smooth them using the emery cloth grade 400. Park the copper screen sleeve over each core. Repeat all of the cable preparation steps above for cable B. Install the connector according to connector installation instruction. Clean the XLPE insulation and connectors with cable cleaning tissue RT. Apply two half lapped layers of semiconductive tape CP61 over the connector area and strand shield. Measure the diameter over the taped connector by using caliper. 
Record the value. Then set the caliper to a diameter the recorded value plus 22mm. This shall be the final outer diameter after taping of the high voltage insulation tape. CP62 It means that we need to build up the insulation tape CP62 with a thickness of 11mm. Apply insulation tape CP62 over the connector and XLPE insulations. Do make a cone of 60mm length at the two ends as shown. Do take note that the wrapping of CP62 tape ends 10mm away from the conductive screen. Remove the PVC tape on the copper tape screen. Apply one half lapped layer semiconductive tape CP61 over the insulation tape extending 10mm onto the copper tape screen. Measure 80mm on the cable outer sheath on both sides and make a mark. Abrade the area with emery cloth grade 150. Using half length of mastic tape CP64, cover the armor cut edge on each side of the joint. Next, slide and stretch the thin copper sleeves 1.6 meters on each cable core and secure it with a small constant force spring equal 2 pieces per core. and secure three of them onto the armour with one large constant force spring on each side. Apply one length of mastic tape CP64 divided by 3 over the small constant force springs on one cable side and one length of CP64 divided by 2 over the big constant force spring on the cable side. Lastly, Apply half length of the CP64 forming O ring shape on cable outer sheath. Use spacer tape CP75 and wrap over the entire joint with 50% overlap starting from the inner edge of the O ring sealing tape CP64 on one side to the outer side of the O ring. Wrap back and forth and finish all the spacer tape supplied in the kit. Take one injection valve. Place it at the center on top of the joint. Secure the position of the injection valve by applying adequate taping using the restricting tape CP71W around it. Wrap three half lapped layers of CP71W over the entire joint. Wrap one layer of pressure tape CP73 around the whole joint starting from the outer edge of spacer tape CP75. Apply with 50% overlap area.
Make a vent hole around 30mm in length parallel with the direction of the cable joint at around 10mm from end edge of the CP75. Space the tape on both sides of the cable. Now we shall prepare the cast resin. Tear the external aluminum bag carefully at the tip of the bag so that it does not tear the internal PE bag. When opened, we can see there are two liquids inside, separated by a profile separator. These are the resin and the hardener. Take out the black separator at the center of the PE bag. Gently squeeze and dough both liquids between 30 to 40 times. This would take approximately 2 to 3 minutes. By this time, you will see the color mix is consistent. Repeat this process in sequence for the subsequent bags. Do not open up the resin bag all at one go. Cut one corner of the resin PE bag and fold it in half. Load the bag into the resin injection bag so the cut side enters first. Insert the resin injection clamp onto the resin injection bag and squeeze the resin by rolling the handle part of the resin injection clamp until the resin is fully pumped into the joint. Inject the resin. Repeat the step until the resin oozes or flow from the air vents. Then immediately seal the vent with CP71 restricting tape. Installation is now complete. Do not backfill or move the joint within two hours.